Welcome to my channel. Today, I'll be sharing 10 tips that will help you boost your grades from a fail to an exceptional distinction. If you want to have good grades, please apply the 10 tips I'm going to share in this video. Hello, my name is Cynthia. I share information that will help your transition into the UK to be as smooth as possible. I have vast experience as a lecturer in academia, both in Nigeria and in the UK. We all know the importance of getting good grades. It could help you get a good job after graduation. It can also help increase your chances of getting your post-study work visa. If you're interested, in before you press that submit button, please watch this till the end. The first tip I'll give you is to follow the assessment brief as given to you by the lecturer. When you are being asked to prepare an assignment or assessment, it's very important that you know the learning outcome and what is expected of you to get those grades going up. Tailor your assessment, assignment or presentations to reflect a good understanding of what has been taught in class. In addition to this, read the assessment grade and feedback grade. It clearly states what is expected of you to get a fill, what you can do to get a pass, commendation, distinction, and exceptional distinction. If I were you, what I would do is I would read all the requirements from fill to exceptional distinction, and then compare my work to know which category I fall. If you do this critically, it will give you an insight of what more you can do to your work to improve the grades. So try your very best before you press the submit button to assess your work to ensure that you've put in all the parameters required for you to get the exceptional distinction. The second tip on my list is that you should check your word count or slide numbers. If you are asked to prepare an essay, there is a word count that is provided. And if the assessment brief says not more than 2000 words, please stick to it. Plus or minus maybe one or two. Do not exceed that limit. While using word count, please be very careful. Read the instructions as stipulated in the assessment brief. If it includes the table titles or figure titles, then pay attention to that particular rule. If the assessment brief says provide eight slides in your presentation, please do not provide nine slides or ten. Stick to eight slides so that you can get the maximum grade that is desirable for you. The third tip on my list is references very very important that you provide referencing in every assessment assignment or whatever thing you are asked to provide but in exams that's a tip of getting a very high score during your examination if they did not tell me to do so is not a good excuse unless what you are asked to provide does not require references for example abstracts or summaries for articles or journals while writing references please make sure you use it from a trusted source. Some website links might not be accepted as a credible source of information. There are some factors you need to consider while including references to your assignment or assessment. Number one is it should not be older than 10 years. Number two is you should apply the style required or specified by your university. Go to your university website and find out the specification that is required. For example, some universities adapt the upper style while others adapt the Harvard style. They would give you guidelines on how to reference journals, books, magazines, newspapers, or websites. Please follow their guidelines. Another important thing about references is you should be able to paraphrase. It's a very important skill in writing in the UK. Paraphrasing means that you shouldn't copy and paste the exact words you read in a journal or article. You should be able to state what exactly you understand about the material you have read. This demonstrates critical thinking skills. And this leads me to the next point, plagiarism screening. Plagiarism is an offense, it's a serious offense in the UK. If you are new to the UK and you are an international student, this is one of the things you should know before you submit your assignment that plagiarism can lead to disciplinary actions imposed by the university. You can lose your 
master's degree admission because of plagiarism. So be very, very warned about this. Be very, very careful about this. Many universities provide a software that will help you check for plagiarism in your work. An example is Turnitin. Turnitin can be used to check the percentage similarity that your work has with other students in your class, as well as other articles and journals published online. When I submitted my thesis, I didn't need to use Turnitin because I already understood the rules of plagiarism. And I understood that if you line four words in the same row, it could be flagged. You should be able to demonstrate a better understanding of what you've read to analyze it in your own words, write it in your own words. So very important that you check your work before you click on the submit button. If you check it and it's above 20%, there might be a cause for concern. Try to scrutinize your work and find out areas where you can paraphrase and change what you've written when you score below 20, it shows a bit of authenticity. Remember that you do not copy that of another student. That's the mistake many people make. You can also plagiarize your own work if you have submitted the same assignment previously to the same university or any other university all over the UK. So be careful, guys. Be careful. For many international students, they are not aware of this when they start and they fall into trouble in their first assignment in the university. If you are getting so much value so far, please like, share, subscribe. The next tip on my list is to check for spelling and grammatical errors. A very simple way of doing this is to go to MS Word, you go under review and click on spelling and grammatical checks. This would help you know what and what needs to be changed. Simple things like adding the right punctuation, putting a full stop after a sentence, adding a capital letter in the first letter after a full stop could lift your grades and polish your work. Remember, people always say that when you look at your work on the computer, it's very difficult for you to be able to identify those mistakes you've made in your work. However, another way you can do this is to use a software like Grammarly. It is free online. Every time you finish writing your essays, go to Grammarly and check your work if it is correct. Polishing your work by removing grammatical errors and correcting spelling mistakes shows that you have paid attention to details that might be going wrong in your work. It shows that you are not careless. This is an important tip, especially if English is not your first language. This is just a resource that has saved many students from failure. The next point is to include illustrations, graphs, tables, and pictorial images that can buttress the points or improve the data you are trying to present. It's very important that you know how to use these resources whenever you're writing essays. It gives better visual presentation of data. If you're trying to illustrate step-by-step -step processes as a science student, you can try using BioRender. This is a very important tool that you shouldn't give up on. It is so good to use this. Try to reference that you created this image. It shows originality. It can also sway people towards a particular argument that you are making in your research. Try your best to make use of these tools whenever you're making presentations on PowerPoint or essays on PDF or MS Word. There are rules when using illustrations, graphs, tables, and pictures in your work. You should put your table titles on top of your tables while your figure titles, for example, those of graphs, pictures, illustrations should be labeled at the bottom. Please always include legends. Legends gives a better explanation of what your work is. Remember that each table, graph or figure should be able to stand alone to explain the points. In as much as visual representation of your data matters, it's important that you reference these tables, graphs or figures in text so that it flows with the idea or argument you are trying to make. The next thing on my list is reported speech, using the right type of speech whenever you're writing an essay. For example, if it's a research you're trying to write, please remember that in the materials and methods stage or the results, 
you should be able to use past tense, which shows that you have done that work. For example, instead of using the spectrophotometer is used to measure the optical density of the culture. You say the spectrophotometer was used to measure the optical density of the culture. Your speech really matters. It shows that you pay attention to details and you understand what research writing is all about. The ninth tip that you should apply, but with caution, is asking a friend or a peer to review your work before you submit it. I know this is a very critical thing. I know, I know, you don't want someone to steal your work. Sometimes you think you are where you've attended all the classes and you might miss one critical information in your work. It's very important that you have discussions with your peers, work in groups, try to learn from each other. There you'll be able to understand some of the little tips or tricks or secrets or ideas on how to present your work so that it can meet the university standard. Sometimes when you have those group discussions, you get to understand what is expected of you from the lecturer. Because you have listened to what your lecturer has asked of you in class, your understanding might not be very, very sound about what is expected. But listening to your peers' explanation of that particular matter can increase your awareness of what is expected of you to prepare. I've seen some people that have missed the assessment brief. When everybody is providing 10 slides of a particular topic, they are providing 12. I bet you if they communicate very well with their fellow colleagues, they won't have this problem. When they see other people preparing 10 slides, they will be aware that they are not expected to provide 12 slides as they are doing at that moment. So try to interact with your peers, ask them questions. While asking your friend to critically look at your work, please do not copy from each other. Also ask your lecturer, you have paid a lot of money to be able to pursue that particular study or masters. Do not allow your money to go to waste. Therefore, ask questions through email or the MS Teams chat, use these resources available to you to get a better understanding of what is expected of you. The last thing is you should check whether your work is well structured, whether the audio is intact. Check everything properly before you press that submit button. You'll be shocked the number of students that submit the wrong assignment and then find out after the deadline has passed that they submitted the wrong assignment and they score a big zero. There are also cases where people upload a presentation and the audio is missing. You know what that means. So check your work, check the reasoning, check the structure, check your figures, ensure that your work is well tailored to what is expected on the assessment brief before you press that submit button. I wish you the best. I'm rooting for you. Bye-bye.